Hello, my name is Adam Wokte, and in this video, we're going to look on how to fight as a new Pikno. Okay, so the Pikno just got a new TLC just the other day, and I literally dropped any project I was working on just to check it out. And spoiler alert, the new TLC is... It sucks, it's bad, the Pikno is a target for anyone to bully. It's something I would say if there was no hope for it. Fortunately, there are some hope for it. Okay, so just send me out. This is not really an how to fight tutorial, but more of a TLC review. I mean, I will talk about how to correctly fight as a thing, but first I believe we got to talk about the, if the TLC does anything to boost the Pignos combat potential. And it does, but only in groups. You see, the Pignos absolutely sucks in brawling. Not just compared to other mid tiers, but even creatures with overall lower stats can easily take out the lone Pigno. Don't believe me? Let's first take a look on the Pikno's new arsenal. In the first slot we have a new passive ability called Cracked Scoots. Basically at the beginning of a fight you won't receive as much damage as you normally do. But when the buff is gone you will receive the full force of any attack. For head abilities we have four options. The first one is the standard bite that does medium damage. The second ability is headbutt with a stupid amount of recoil. For the third option, we have Horn Swipe that causes heavy knockback at the cost of stamina, but depending on the situation, this can be rather useful. Then we have the new ability, Head Slam, that does high damage, but unfortunately also has recoil. Furthermore, if you miss any of your attacks, you'll become dazed for 3 seconds, making you vulnerable for any incoming attacks. For sensibilities, we have three options. The first one is a new ability called Juggernaut. Basically, your attacks will become stronger when you're moving fast and running, but if you stand still or move slowly, then your damage output will just be pummeled to the ground. The second ability is Mouth Guard. Basically, depending on what item you hold, you will receive a certain buff. Which is also kind of surprising and impressive. The dinosaurs has figured out on how to use tools! The third ability, Stability, makes Jukes and Charge use less stamina, and has faster cooldown. For Hide, we have also three options. The first one is your standard Resilient Scale, increases Bleed and Venom healing by 30%. Second ability is Second Win, whenever you receive a hit in combat, you will receive 2 points in stamina. Basically, you will regenerate some stamina, not much, but a little. The third height is Thick Scutes, basically improves your health recovery. For Leg abilities, we have three options, the first one being Strong Legs, take less knockback and increase bone healing. Long Distance Runner reduces your stamina drain. And the last ability, Braced Legs, basically makes you ignore the decrease in speed when you run uphill. Also a few other buffs, but we'll ignore them for now. For Back Limb, once again, we have three options. The first one is Knockout. It is a tail attack that does heavy knockback depending on how long you charge it for. The second ability, Juke, you basically do a 180. It works even when you run. The third ability, Charge, doesn't need an explanation. For voice abilities, we have two options. The first one is Bulldozer, basically boosts your knockback and can be stacked if you are in group. The second voice ability is Deep Breath. When you activate this, your stamina recovery rate will increase significantly, only when you walk though. The subspecies hasn't really changed too much since the last time. Once again, I lean more towards the stamina recovery subspecies, but after some testing, I kinda lean towards attack knockback as well. To be honest, the attack damage subspecies could have been better if only the extra attack bonus was a little bit more than just 3 plus. But it is what it is. I lean more towards stamina recovery, but the attack knockback can also work. Now before we continue, I feel like we need to really hammer down the fighting style for the Pycnonomosaurus. Probably butcher that name, but anyways, continuing on. Unlike the other mid tiers, the Pycnonomosaurus does not excel in brawling. Its strong suit are definitely hits and run, and that can certainly create problems in some situations, or most of them actually. Especially if you are in a 1v1. Anything with a better turning circle than you are pretty much destined to ride your ass. And when they do ride your ass, well, let's just say that the turning circle on the Pycnonomosaurus are absolutely dog shit. I haven't really gone over what abilities you should equip and it really depends on the situation. If anything, your abilities doesn't really allow you to do 1v1s. Let's say you have Head Slam equipped. 
If you miss your attack, you'll become dazed for 3 seconds, and while you're dazed, you won't be able to attack back. Which means that you are in a one-sided beating for a short amount of time, with no chances for retaliation. Sure, 3 seconds may not sound much, but in a fight, every second count. If you don't have any teammates to take the focus off from you, then you will find out pretty soon that somebody are totally owning your ass. And it's not too difficult to get behind a Pycno. Like I mentioned earlier, its turning circle are absolutely dog shit. And even if the Pycno use precise movement, its turning speed aren't that great either. If you think that is bad, then I'm about to make it worse. Pay attention that the Pycno doesn't really do too much damage. This is because of Juggernaut. If the Pycno stands still, its attack will become 75% weaker. In other words, if you have Juggernaut equipped, then you cannot afford to take a defensive position. Your attack will become so weak. I recommend a combination of Headbutt and Mouth Guard. The Mouth Guard will negate some of the recoil and Headbutt are fast attack that doesn't have too long of a cooldown. It is also a good combination for Head Slam, as Head Slam also has recoil. Another problem is that many of your attacks are focused on using your head. You can use the juke, but I'll come back to it later on why it's not too reliable in a 1v1. This is why it's good to have the knockout tail attack. Basically, whenever your other abilities are in cooldown, you can use the tail attack to keep them off your rear. Again, I don't think its main focus is to do damage, but just to keep people from tail riding you. There is one combination I tried to pull off but haven't been able to, and that is the juke plus the head slam. It's a risky technique, and if you mess up, then you will find out that you have wasted stamina and are vulnerable for incoming attacks. In all honesty, the Pycno won't really have a good time against any other mid-tiers. In a head-to-head -head clash, the Pycno will definitely lose. That's why you should use the terrain to your advantage. Listen, I'm not trying to undersell the Pycnonomosaurus. I know it can be a danger in certain situations, but in the 1v1, all your enemy needs to do is just stand still and just let you run into their attacks. Even if you land a few blow, on the way out you'll be vulnerable to any incoming attacks, and that is what's going to kill you. Sure, you can try and drag out the battle, but that is only if your opponent allows you to rest. Even if you use deep breaths, that's not going to help you if you use all your stamina on your attacks. And you may be a bit faster than the other mid-tiers, but you're not overwhelmingly faster than them. It is better to just amass and sick an army on them. And honestly, you don't need me to tell you on how to fight as a group. I will recommend what abilities you should have though. When fighting mid-tiers, you should have the following abilities, especially those over the green line. But of course, the final choice is yours. You just have to find out what you prefer. When it comes to fighting Apexes, however, this is probably a bit of pill for your Pycno and Carno fans to swallow, but it's not much you can do. In the 1v1, the different stats are just too great. 
all they really need to do is just take a defensive stand and while you are fast, you are not unpredictable. All they need to do is just get the timing down. And when they do, it hurts. Let's try that again, but from the perspective of the Apex. Yeah, probably don't bother with 1v1s against Apexes, and if you think otherwise, until I see video proof, please go cope somewhere else. All in all, best way to fight as a Pycno, group up with many others and then jump some poor fellow.